All right, welcome back. We're gonna jump right in here. Got another APA Masters match for you today. And I'm really excited about this one. We are up against a really solid opponent. Shares my first name, name of Anthony, and his last name is Alvarado, as you can see. And um, I played him before. He's the captain of this team that we're playing against here. This is week 13. This was our scheduled match for week 13 of this season. And I was experimenting a little bit with the break here during this, this day in the season. And I started off with a head ball break. Came in really solid, but scratched in the side, which is, is unfortunate. Um, it didn't look like it got kicked in at all. It did just kind of float straight over into the side. So he starts off with ball in hand. And um, I remember this match pretty well because it was just a couple days ago now. And he starts to kind of size up the table. And like so many of us, we play in different leagues and different sets of rules. I think originally he was considering uh, being able to kind of play ball in hand. And then I let him know, hey, like it's, you know, it's behind the kitchen and uh, or it's, you know, inside the kitchen for APA. And we kind of chat about the uh, different rules and keeping everything straight. So I had a little laugh about that one. Um, but you don't want to be, even if it's not ball in hand, you don't want to be scratching on the break, Masters. You just don't want to be giving that up. So he's got to think through his pattern here. He very smartly chose to take solids. Uh, while we're waiting for him to work through his pattern, feel free to drop a like, subscribe, put down comments, do all the things that uh, feed the YouTube monster. But it looks like his plan is going to be to clear out the right-hand side of the table here today and start to work his way back down. Really, the only issue I foresee is getting good on the one on the low side of this 15. Looks like he nudged his six ball. Nobody likes that position on a pool table. Six balls in that spot. Just past the side pocket. He's got to make a choice here. Um, that would go in that corner. It does look like he's got that edge on it. We try rail first on the one. I don't remember what he does here, so let's, let's check this out. If I get to the table this rack, I'm going to have to deal with that cluster of the 15 and the 14. Really my major issue. Being good behind the 12. Yeah, stripes are rough. Definitely chose the right suit. Probably what I would do is play the, the rail first on the 1. I guess you could play safe. You could play safe down into the 1. Just push the 1 into the short rail and leave the cue ball here. the first match of the day though so maybe not getting into that mindset of having to duck and play safe that where he wants to end up after making the one looks like a rail first on the one here nicely played judged that pretty well i think he probably came a little too thick into the one ball maybe thicker than he thought and he was hoping to come back up above the 10 to get a shot on the four in the side. Good plan. Didn't really get a reward here. Doesn't seem like you can tighten up the three ball enough. The bank between the 11 and the four. This is a tough spot. Can't see enough of the right side of the six to run it up the rail. the six ball again that's just a rules thing between leagues um apa you don't have to call your shots except for the eight ball but good courtesy thing to do anyway never bothers me but he's calling shots we tried to thin he did have that edge of the six he tried to thin it into the side his speed was really good on that if he had made that six there's a lot that can go go really well for you so i get my first look at the table here Got a back cut on the 12. It's not super comfortable. 
I think I have the 13 up top here. Probably have that cut, which would help to kind of open things up a little bit. I am looking at the 1514, though. I know that's a problem, and I want to address that early. So the thinking here, sometimes an eight ball, because there are clusters left, you want to address your problems. Your opponents tried to run out but didn't successfully get out. And you lock them up, get ball in hand, and make your own run out easier. You could try to come into the 15 and leave them behind 14 here. Or spin off the 12 and come in under the 15, 14, and leave them behind that wall. That's the idea here, is just to glue him up on the 15. Pretty close. Leaked out just a little bit. Really not by much. I think that was a good play. Didn't break out the 15-14, so that still would have been a problem to address, but with ball in hand, I think you had some options to fix that. Just overplayed it slightly, drifted out too far. Left my opponent an open shot on the 6, the 4 in the side. Don't think the 4 goes past the 13 up here. So he can, he's got to just clutch up, either make that thin cut on the 4, or play the 6 up top. Shape can be complicated here. I think that's why he goes for the 4, because it brings you back down table. I like that play. A good stroke, stayed level, stayed down. Shapes up the 6 really nicely in the side. Comes in behind the 3, picking his lines, he's looking good. All you gotta do, float down, get a little bit below the three so you could punch up off the three. Yeah, I think he got too flat on it. So ideally you'd wanna be maybe a little bit below the three here so that when you play the three, the cue ball wants to float up above the eight. He's got a bit too flat on it. And the eight does not go, I think that's what he's looking at here, too thin to go past the 13. So he's got to play shape into this area, get above it, play it past the 10 ball. And in order to do that, you could dig down into this. Just straight draw should do it. Some players will naturally want to use a bit of spin to get it over there. Don't need spin, really, but beautiful stroke on that. Great speed. Got him right in line with the 8. Stay level and put this one down. Well played. It's a good out. Love to see it. He's got a good break. Check this out. Breaks off the top rail. Throws his whole body into it. Notice the 8 didn't move at all, though. Pretty interesting. On that head ball break. Didn't get disturbed by anything. So, good break. Cue ball gets knocked a little bit. On that type of break, you're really putting your body into that. Um, but it works out well. I see a lot of players really use that type of break really well. Pretty open spread here. And it looks like stripes down. So he'll have to commit to stripes. You can do the same kind of deal where you clear this side of the table and work your way down. That combo does work, but like he's looking at, it has to be from behind the 12 ball, the long rail side of the 12 ball, to cut the 9 in. So yeah, from here he's just kind of looking at his pattern. Make sure you pick a good sequence, commit to that. This ends up being a break and run. Remember the overall match well, but not every single shot. Opened up okay, could have gotten a bit more out of that ball, but maybe worried about overplaying it. He's okay here. Low outside to come back down table. He's not thrilled with that one. Because he caught a bit of a roll. It could have gotten unlucky on that two ball. Um, looked like he was steering it a little bit with his backhand. But he's got options. Super thin cut. Ended up overcutting that. It went to the right-hand side of the pocket and cheating it a bit. Didn't get shape on his 13 or the combo. Going for the 
reverse bank here across corner nine ball. This goes hopped a little off the rail. And he didn't cut it quite enough. So he lets me get to the table. Seven and the six look a little clustered, but they're not. They they both go. So I've got plenty of options here. You just need to pick clean lines on these. That's me looking at where I want to be on the eight ball, ultimately. And I could also use the six or the seven as the key ball, because the eight ball goes here. But I initially, for some reason, just decide that maybe the five would get me nice on that eight. So probably start clear out the six and the seven first. And again, pick a plan, commit to it. Team pretty full into the six, would have liked to have been on the seven. I knew the five was a good backup for that. When the balls are sort of out in the center of the table away from the rail, like the two ball, you want to try to address those earlier on. First match of the day, so I'm feeling a little icy, just working on warming up, playing patterns with confidence. Experimenting with my practice strokes too. I'll talk about that in a future video, but changing techniques a little bit too. I'm always thinking about stuff like that. I'm always kind of tinkering with my game. That one ball floats nice and easily down below the four and you've got the option to get under the two or come back over for the three or the seven so just pick your line and your speed yeah i'm kind of looking at if i want to come all the way across to this lower long rail between the three and the seven you don't want to flirt with the side pocket obviously there's no need to get over there underplayed that Still good on the three. You could definitely still play the seven from here. Making the shots a bit harder than they need to, though. So you can tell I'm not feeling super comfortable yet. Stroke, practice stroke on the way up while standing. Down on this three. Just come across table. That would work. I think that's what I was looking to do is get on this side of the two and then the seven to the eight. That would have been a nice out. That was my original plan based on the way that I was playing this pattern. Now I'm thin on the two. I don't want to send the cue ball towards this corner pocket. I'm going to have to commit to the seven. I'm looking at the seven that's just slightly off the rail, this is where I want to be on the two ball. Be able to get good on the eight. If I overplay the two slightly and I end up in here, that's okay because you can cut this into the rail and just speed control down in the 12 and 13. So this is just a matter of picking a good spot on these. I think I ended up taking another look at the two just to really convince myself that it's not the right shot right now. You're good, man. Just move on. Bear down. Take your medicine on the seven ball. Shoot this shot. Make this one. Put it down. Stay still. Looks pretty good. Got a bit out of that, a bit more out of that than I would have liked, but we're okay here. I walk over right over, get behind the two ball, look at my line, where I'm going to come through. Picking my zone there on the rail. So anywhere on that third diamond on the top long rail would be good here. Take another look behind the two ball. And this is speed control, a natural high outside if you like, a natural line. Kind of floats you down there. You don't need to do too much here. Good smooth cut, center pocket, a little, little friendly nudge from the 12. And if you like this kind of stuff, do the YouTube things. I appreciate it. The algorithm appreciates it. Good one. That'll feel good, right? You get a game like that under your belt, your opponent lets you on the table and you, you clear it out like that. Certainly not the cleanest pattern play, but you know, you pick a pattern and commit to it. You just gotta, gotta make something happen. I immediately switch to the second ball break. So we're up 1-1. I go to second ball break. 
And the thinking with the second ball break here, especially in APA, because you can win with an eight on the break, not my favorite way to win by any means, right? Like it's not, not a ton of skill goes into that, but you do have the chance to win on an eight ball break and we're in competition to win. So you take those chances when you can get them. Uh, the other thing about the second ball break that I like is if you make a ball, the spread is likely to be better. Like in this case, this is a pretty spread out table. If you don't make a ball, for whatever reason, there tends to be clusters and you leave your opponent with a clustered table. Which is a pretty good position to be in. So we've got stripes here. Floated up, I wanted the option of the 15 in the side or the 14 in the corner. Nine goes nice and easy. I'm looking at my line from maybe the nine as the key ball to the eight. And pretty quickly, you can see me kind of snapping into this mode. I'm picking a pattern, I'm committing to things, and I know where I want to be on these different shots. So 15 gets the 12 down here in the side. Bounce back over. You don't have to do much on this ball. Stay still. Yep. 12 goes, there's plenty of room. You can cheat this, you can get a lot out of the cue ball if you need to. But for me, I'm just thinning it and coming back up to the top long rail. Starting to starting to settle in here. Back high inside. Overplayed it. So we're on the back side of the 14 and the 11, which is not awesome. That's really where I wanted to end up, which yeah, you, that's fine. You can look at that. <laughs> but that's not what we have. We got to play with some of what's on the table here. So back cutting the 14 is dicey because it sends you off the one or and or right into the seven ball. So it would be kind of one of these. And it's hard to gauge what's going to happen from there. You take the back cut on the 11. If you bear down on this shot, you send the 11 right into the corner. The cue ball can come across table. And I think the hope would be to get on the 9 or the 14, that's the play. That's what you need to do. Having some commitment issues here, it looks like. So, yep, get behind the 11. you got to pick that line. Queuing's a little awkward here off the rail, has to be said. Get comfortable still. that well overplayed it though so here it comes i think i think it's that swing especially between these tournament videos if you saw my other videos from the tournament i'm thinking about erring on the side of overplaying these balls and not underplay them basically so you're trying to find that sweet spot and especially in this rack i've overplayed the last few shots the 12 across the 11 here punching over so now I have to size up. I don't have a cut on the 9. I have to size up a bank on the 9 towards the 14 in the hopes that the 9 kicks in the 14, which is pretty wild. I don't even remember considering a safe here because I've only got two balls left on the table. What are you going to do? I mean, come off here, like leave him frozen on one of his own. He's just going to safe me back and get ball in hand. I think you have to go aggressive here. Yeah, undercut that nine. The line was pretty good, like the bank was good, but undercut it. I think sometimes we trick ourselves because we're we're playing for a combo like that. We're not used to banking the combo. He and I were joking a little bit about how his one ball is laid up. Yes, I would have preferred for that to have fallen. Let's see what he does here. Got his work cut out for him. Luckily, the three goes in the side. It's not too close to the rail. You can play the two ball off it right now. Didn't need to. Plays the two clean. Every ball's got a pocket. Just a matter of picking a good pattern and commit to it. It's like the style, right? Kind of finish that side of the table. No need to come back up for the four. Good smooth follow through. Get some back down table. Hard for things to go wrong from there. Got the one, but a lot of players will keep that ball as 
a blocker. They think about it that way. He doesn't want the one ball. He goes for the six in the side. That's that one. That's tough. I think I think going pure offense, if you didn't have a line on anything else, you didn't want to play the seven, go for the one. You can come back over for the three. Stay aggressive there. Press the advantage. Now, luckily, the one is still in the pocket, and after he missed, it's left as a blocker. I didn't have much here. I cut the 14 to, what, make the one, and then it's his turn. It doesn't really do anything. Couldn't kick behind the 14 to try to knock it over, so I think part of what I considered would have been come into this rail on the back side of the 14 to kick it into this corner. Risky. The ball comes off the 14. Luckily, the one would stop it, so it's not going to scratch. Hard to control. Hard to judge that. I don't really know where the cue ball is going to end up. The nine doesn't really go anywhere. So I start to think about if I hit the nine really well into the one, is there a way without being able to put draw on the cue ball, which then imparts topspin? I'm sure you all know this. Topspin into the object ball. Can't really do that at an angle much less an angle where you're jacked up over a ball. So this is a complicated situation. But the theory is I could hit the nine well enough into the one that the nine might still roll through the one and go in. And I didn't even really hit the one that full. So not great. Looking back, I don't, I don't love that decision, but there wasn't really too much else. Maybe a defense where you push the nine slowly up onto the one? I'm going to go back and take a look at that one. Let me know what you guys would do. I'd love to hear some thoughts on that situation. Because now my opponent's got an open table. It's all Skittles all the way down. Five and the three go inside. Six puts you on the eight. Good to me. You can go high inside on the five, let your stroke out a little bit, drift up for the six. Taking his line on the six ball, seeing where he wants to be. Came a little thick into that five, but he's fine. He willed that one in. Little little body rock. Got good on the eight. Stay down, make this ball. Got him. It puts him up two one. He's breaking. So, reminder that in Masters, it's a race to seven, and it can be a combination of eight ball and nine ball, unless you start with nine ball and you play all seven games in nine ball. If you start with eight ball, there's a maximum of five games of eight ball. So, he's up by one. after the stripes here doesn't look like he came out far enough for the 13 i think that was probably the plan or did he nope i think he's got it yes gotta look at that shaves off the eight a good line on the 14 gets above the nine Everything's got a pocket again. Good open table. It's starting to look like a break and run. That works. I think I might have played the nine and then that ball on the side to get me good on the key ball. But he didn't really look at where he wants to be on the key ball. He's okay. A wide window for that ball. He didn't really look where he wants to be on the eight ball. Ah, that's a big six ball. Tough one. 
you hate to see it, but he's my opponent. You know, like I I want to I want to win too. <laughs> like I want to play. But breaking runs are exciting. I would have been happy for him, but it's tough. It's a big six ball. I'm convinced if he had taken a breath, if he had walked over to the other side of the table and picked his zone, picked his position window for the eight, that he would have given himself that that extra step and not had to deal with the six. That, to me, maybe he's judging up a kick from off the long rail into the eight that way. If I'm at the table, this is a jump shot all day long, but I don't know if, uh, if he can jump. Maybe that's what he's doing right now, is going to get his jump cue. We'll find out shortly, one way or the other. He's calling it. Going for the kick. Kind of a tough kick. It's hard to judge. Cue ball's out close to the center of the table. He's digging down on it a little bit. I just got to try to spin it. A little body English here. He's moving around. While he's down on the ball. Yeah. Missed it by about a ball. Not not terribly judged. Um, definitely went in the right direction and maybe just too fast. Spin didn't take like he expected. But here we go. Ball in hand with a completely open table. You got to run this out, right? And there's plenty of options for key balls. Just everything looks nice for the eight. So clear out the balls that are in the center of the table. Six, get down on the seven. Four takes you over to the two. Five, one, three, right? That looks pretty good to me. What could go wrong? A little snatchy on that one. Could have gotten a bit more onto the four. Now I'm looking at the two. Is a bit thinner than we wanted it to be. The four is also completely fine here. Takes you right over to the five or the two. Looking at it now, that's probably what I would go for. I like the two better. So two to feeling unsettled. You can yeah, I'm I'm looking uncomfortable now. I'm gonna commit to this two ball. Float back over. Okay, put a good stroke on that one. We're on the back side of the four, which is still okay. Even a stop shot here, you don't have to get you don't have to try to get too much out of this four ball. A stop shot would be fine. You can still play the five from there. I opt for a punch. I decide to punch over, which is also okay. Punch it over, fire that in faster than my camera's frame rate can even account for. Um, just to get a bit more out of the cue ball to get a little nicer on the yeah, neater shot on the five. So here you can just float down high ball or just miss that five ball, dude. Weird. Yeah, I'm jabbing my cue. That's a weird one. I think, I think I got down with a certain stroke in mind and then changed my mind while I was down on that ball into sort of a drag shot to slow it down which is fine that's a very playable shot but you got to commit to that like you need to know you're doing that before you get down so i changed my plan that's what that's what made that go wrong he's got a tough decision here you can't bank the eight cross corner where he's standing five's a blocker you don't want to try to cut that the bottom left. So he's going up here. He's going into this side. And this is kind of tough to judge because you have to send the eight into this rail. Come up this way. Two ball's pretty safe though. This is a speed and spin thing. It's hard to judge. Ooh, pretty risky. Flirted with that uh that other side pocket. But I think that one. You hit that a little too firm. 
But at this point, I'm I'm just thrilled to be back at the table. I don't feel like I deserve to be back at the table <laughs> after missing that five ball. I was pretty steamed about that one, I remember. But I'm happy to be back at the table nonetheless. I've got this other opportunity. And this one ball seems silly right now. Like, anybody can make this shot, right? But after that five ball, it kind of, like, rattled myself in a weird way. So I play that kind of timid. But it's fine. I know where that goes. And from here easily could just sort of screw back to come above the three or you can just stop right where the five ball is get above or below the three you don't want to be straight on the three any kind of angle that's fine get below the three any angle is fine on that ball to get over on the eight and you just pick a good spot I think a lot of players will will try to come out to get on either side of the eight um, but this is a big window for playing the eight up in the corner so i play sort of a force follow shot and that was uh, allowing my frustration to take physical form. <laughs> Pretty cathartic. Force follow that. Get shape. Assert dominance over the 8-ball. Just knock this guy in. Smooth stroke, stay level. Put that, just put that game behind you. I'm breaking here. Second ball break. It's 2-2. We're tied up. This is the last game of 8-ball. Eight, 8 gets kicked. Eight's moving, top right. That's a game. I give him a little little apologetic wave. Like I said, it's not how I want to be winning games. But you take those wins. He and I were joking a little bit. I was like, you know, I said something about that silly five ball shot. Like, oh, I got to get that out of my system. And then when I knocked in the eight, he was like, you need to get that out of your system too. <laughs> so move over to nine ball. We were joking a bit about this too. Because if you, if you rewind, that nine ball was wired up. That was... That the nine ball was moving. It's always interesting switching in one match. I like the Masters format for this reason. Switching between disciplines. So switching eight ball to nine ball. Kind of a good change of pace. I needed a palate cleanser after that weird five ball miss. We've got a we've got a really playable table here. This is a natural three rail around for the so you can make it completely unnatural too. A three rail around for the three ball. But I got hung up on the four. Now I'm on the top short rail, long shot on the three. You try to hold this for the side. A lot of players don't like to roll that in. You could shoot at this, stay level all the way through the three, get down below the four. Feels like a more assertive, more confident way to play it. Take a look again at the four ball. I think I'm also waiting for another player at their table. Good and smooth through that ball. That works out. I like that way of playing it instead of trying to hold it really slow roll that. Hold it up for the four on the side. There's too much that can go wrong at that speed. If I got a good line on the four, I can punch over to the top short, the top long rail. Get past the five. Good punch. Good authoritative stroke. Starting to starting to shape up a little bit. I get pretty flat on this five, and that's my like little chop action there. But you're fine. You can draw back to that rail right where I was indicating. Straight back off the five, and you've got a good line on the six. Do these all day. Get comfortable. If you don't like your spot, stand up. Get comfortable here. Smooth draw stroke. You've got a lot of action off that rail. Don't worry about overplaying this one. Underplay it instead. Oh, I remember that. It felt weird. It felt weird on the tip, like I miscued or something. It wasn't a very clear miscue. I mean, you. You know when you miscue. This one was sort of felt like a half a miscue or something. It was really odd. I don't want to waste time thinking about that because everything was in good condition. So you just bear down on that six ball. Bobbled that one a little bit. Not super clean. But valley tables are forgiving. So takes that one. And this eight ball is pretty straightforward. Cue ball normally wants to dig into that rail and it'll want to sort of come down table. Not that. Not as that line, but 
You can hold this up just a little bit. You could stay on this side of the nine, or you can come back across, use multiple rails. And I think that was the intention was to come back across and allow for more room on the short side of the nine ball. Holding it might have been the better option. We've got a bigger window here. And now, unfortunately, I'm looking at a long table bank shot on the nine. Pretty disappointed in that one. I remember having to, to swallow that. The angle's not wired up for the bank, but this is a very makeable bank shot. And this is another one I remember. I got down on that ball with a certain speed in mind. And just like that five, five ball that I missed in the eight ball game, I changed my mind. Changed my mind about the speed. Something in my brain said, you're playing nine ball, and if you miss, if the nine ball has enough pace, maybe it'll go in somewhere else. And I just like listened to that demon. I was like, yeah, let it ride. Let's just like fire this thing, which is silly. There's no reason to hit that nine ball at that pace. So we run a whole table and then give up a nine. Fortunately, fortunately and unfortunately, uh, he kind of threw the cue at that one. Maybe didn't feel great about the cut. Two ball scratches and he gives up the ball in hand nine ball shot, which is gracious. A nine ball break's looking pretty good, I have to say. Stopping the rock, getting a good spread, making a ball consistently. And this spread is pretty good. There's a little bit of traffic in here, but everything goes. So I start to I start to move at a good pace here. Because I'm feeling more confident. And I like I like how this rack is looking. The only thing that's kind of weird is either getting underneath the five ball. To play it up here or getting above it and playing the 5-9 combo. Everything else is straightforward. Pick a good spot on the 4. Yeah, I'm going to draw back off the 3 and come off the 4 to come up table. Looking at potentially getting below the 5. But I remember not liking that as much as just getting above it and trying for the combo. So I commit to the combo. Got a good line on the four. Could have gotten a bit more out of it, but it, it ended up working out fine. I had to use some spin to come over enough to get good on the five. That's me just picking my line for where I wouldn't be ideally to play that combo. It's not an easy combo. Probably looking back on this, trying to play the five straight somewhere would have been a much higher percentage. So overruled that slightly. We still have the short side cut on the five. We could go into the top left-hand corner, but I'm committed to this combo. I'm liking the look of that. I line up on where I need to hit the five, and I get right back down. So I hit the five pretty well, but I overcut the nine ball into the bottom short rail. And I don't really leave anything super easy, which is good for me. But that's a shame. That would have helped my rhythm a lot to get out in this rack, to have a, a break and run, no less. In this rack, I think that would have felt really good. And it back cutting the five, maybe? I don't remember what he does. Looks like that's what he's trying. Sends the cue ball into the seven six. Or just into the seven. Cool. Five goes. Trick shots. Make both. Now we're long on the six, and he's looking at a super thin cut in the side, or a safe, or send the six into the nine and make something happen. Send the six into the nine. It's going. It went. 
he gives a bit of a wave at that one and yeah we knew like it's like he wasn't playing for that but it's the game it happens so he's up one up, well up one additional game i'm still in the lead but he's breaking here and the cue ball kind of goes wild but he puts some down he's got to look at the one Got some work to do though. Really just about getting on that four ball. That looks good. He was straighter on the one than it looked from the video. So he's clean on the two and it takes him right towards the four. He can just float through. Perfect. Nice. He's got a good rhythm going now. Nice and easy on that four ball. Maybe a little flatter on the five than he would want to be, but he can still work with this. Nice and easy, just punch off the rail. Don't let perfect be the enemy of good enough. This is just working out. Got the six and float down. Got plenty of table. Seven's real forgiving. Just send this cue ball around for the nine. Some players will choose to stun off the seven kind of like that but straightening it out he decided to do the two slash three rail thing and gets really nice on that nine ball there you go a little, little break and run for him there to tie things up four four that's a nine on the snap but he scratched so i <laughs> While recording, I saw the nine go, and I was like, all right, I'm going to stop the recording. And then he let me know that he scratched, and I had completely missed the scratch. I looked away. Um, so in these rules, in this rule set, nine gets spotted on the foot spot, and it's ball in hand. But that would have been a quick way to put him, put him up another game. I remember deliberating whether I wanted to play the combo from the one to the six, or just play the one clean. Either works, you just don't want to complicate things too much with the combo, potentially leave the one in a bad spot. So just stay, stay down on this one, take advantage of the big pocket. And we look fine on the two. Getting on the four is a little tricky, Seven blocks the natural line for the four. So I'm looking at where I want to be on the three. Maybe we don't even mess with the seven. You stay out closer to the center of the table and take a thinner cut on the four. Probably the higher percentage way to play it. So I needed to get a lot more out of that two ball. And I let up on the draw stroke, so now we're shooting over, we're having to bridge over the eight ball. Long shot on the three. And come back up for the four. Or stun over to the bottom long rail, out into the center of the table for the four. Yeah, dog that one. We sent the cue ball in the right direction, which is cool, but the cut on the three was kind of gross. Didn't hit that well at all. So he's got a long shot on the three. And a lot of work to do to get on the four. Unless he decides to do that keep it simple thing. And just put the cue ball in the center of the table. And take a more aggressive cut on the four. I don't know what he's sizing up here it seems like. But basically you just commit to making the three. And the shape will take care of itself. So that works out. He maybe even got a bit more out of it than he needed. But he's got a thin cut on the four, which sends you towards the five. Oh, he overcut it. God, it's disappointing. Yeah, maybe trying to get too much out of the cue ball. Not sure, but overcut that one. Pretty much automatic shape on the five. 
from that shot. And here I just have to pick a good spot on the 5 to get back up for the 6. Another funny one, this is the kind of layout, you know, set this up on my home table, I always run out this table. But my decision making was a little weird today. So I get, I leave myself really long on the 5 and pretty straight on the 5. So this could be a power draw shot. I'm looking at, am I coming into that rail? Am I kind of punching back over to come into the top right hand side where I'm standing? Get on the six. So good cue action there. Good, good body movement. Body movement was really minimal, but I didn't hit low enough. I didn't strike low enough on the cue ball to get the draw that I needed. But the cut was good, the five went clean, I had more side spin on that than draw. And luckily I at least end up with an edge on the six. If I start to look at sort of a kick and stick, it doesn't work if it's this thin. I think I try to cut this. Yeah, I try to cut it, and I caught sort of the back side of the six. And the seven ends up flying in for no reason. You play pure offense here and try to run the six down the rail. I immediately just go for a safe. I don't like where the six is at, so I want to get distance. And my intention was to put him behind the nine. Didn't spend enough time thinking about it. I should have walked around behind the nine to actually pick my spot. Tell my body what to do. But I didn't. So I underplayed that and I leave him a look at the six. He's got a long cut on the six, very makeable ball. If you shoot all the way through this, you can get back below the eight. So you're coming this way. Get back below the eight like that. Came too thin into the six. And a wild bump off the knuckle of the side pocket. It leaves me perfect on the six ball. Cool gods are looking out for me. I don't know what else to say. So I have a easy line on this six ball to make it. I just need to pick a specific spot on the eight that sends me towards the nine. Not much to think about here. And I don't want to overcomplicate this. I'm picking my patterns and committing to it, which I've noticed improvement with that. Playing through these situations more confidently, trusting the instincts, trusting my experience, and just that point it's about nerves and bearing down so nothing fancy here not much to do not good on that nine ball caught a bit of a jelly roll has to be said right he uh missed the six and set me up on the six hammer that one home puts us up five four Nine on the snap. Name of the channel. Like, you got to expect it from time to time, right? So, there you go. Now we're on the hill. Just like that. Pretty solid break. I lost the cue ball a little bit. Drifted over to the right-hand side of the table. The six doesn't go somehow. <laughs> uh, but... The one is kind of glued here, which is not great. Does not leave me with an offensive option. I remember this layout. I remember looking at the one to see if I could potentially bank it back into the six. Because the six is pretty makeable if you were able to bank it. But I remember it feeling a little too tight. And I was worried about a double kiss on the one. I just didn't know if that were to happen. I wouldn't be able to really guess what was going to happen with the cue ball or the one ball. I don't want to risk that. Yeah, I look at the the bank here, cross side bank. I'd be curious to set this up again to see if it is actually too thin. One was not frozen to the rail, I remember that. There was a little bit of space. I come and look at it again, and I opt for a simple safety, just send him up table, send the one ball away from the cue ball. So 
full into the one ball, a little bit of spin. Needed to get a bit more out of that. Came too full into the one ball, I think. But he's long straight in on the one, shooting over the five, kind of awkward queuing. One goes. If you make a really nice long stop shot on that one ball, you can make the two. Yeah, kind of awkward queuing. Not totally over the five. Mm, he almost got that. Didn't miss that one by much. That would have been really rough for me if I had ended up behind the three ball. But I've got a good line on the one. You can kind of high inside, touch the rail in there, and roll back out for the two. I come back and check. How's the two going to look? I like how the two looks. This is kind of the tempo that I'm trying to develop here. I don't want to waste so much time thinking about things. I'm trying to bring confidence to the game, trust the instincts, all the stuff that I've been saying here in this video. Know how to play, just make the things happen. Overplayed that, big deal, right? You're on the good side of the two ball. You don't have to be close. Don't get cute. Don't let perfect be the enemy of good enough. And this is more than good enough on the two ball. Angle of the two sends you over to the three. That's fine. You didn't pull back as much as you wanted to. You're still good on the three. Make this three ball, it sends you towards the five. A little bit of low outside. Again, this, this is what I'm looking for in my game right now. Good touch. Float right over, nice and easy. Speed control on the five back around and I think that's let's see how good my judgment is it should come right into that kind of second diamond from behind the seven let's see what it actually looks like I don't have to do much here it's just float through not bad I tap a little bit because I guess I felt like I overhit it but you're fine here like a good spot on the seven another thing you can just look at the table and for the most part you're going to know kind of what you need to do i get behind the eight i look at the eight the line through the eight ball into the corner pocket draws this line up here anywhere on this line is going to feel good for the eight ball that's what we need that's that's the kind of sight picture that we're looking for and then from there, it's trust your stroke and speed control. This is a real. This is looking like a really good rack. Stay down. Don't move. Lean through that ball. And that's going to do it for us today. That takes that match. We go shake hands. Um, like I said, I have a great time playing with that guy. Really good sport. Um, tons of knowledge about the game. Really fun to play with. And uh, this one felt really good for my first match of the day. So enjoying the Masters format. We've got a really strong team this year. I really like our chances of going to Vegas. So stay tuned. There's some really exciting stuff coming up um, as we continue to play through the season. We're gunning for playoffs. We're gunning for Vegas. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push for us to get there. Um, so yeah, thanks again. I do the YouTube stuff. If you made it all the way to the end and you're not subscribed, you definitely should. <laughs> I don't like to throw shoulds around, but um, you know, you're in the right place, right? So subscribe and get the notifications going so that you see when my new stuff comes up. I'm constantly working on improving the channel. I want the quality to be better. I want angles and, and camera quality and focus and everything to be better. You can tell, if you've seen the other videos, that my focus did not drop at all in this one, so I'm happy about that. Um, but any constructive criticism is welcome too, so feel free to leave that. Um, so yeah, just again, thanks for being here. I really enjoy this stuff, really enjoying the little community that's coming together, and I hope to see you guys again soon.